What's your love in the footy world? Well, you know, I, I, it's, there is only one code, Watto, and you know what it is. AFL. AFL. Good stuff. It is good stuff. And your team? West Coast Eagles, mate. I'm from mm. WA. We won't talk Founding about fan. Them. They so. beat, uh, they beat um, the uh, Carlton by three. That's we enough. Did. We don't talk we anymore about that. That's all right. What's your, uh, what's your passion today? What's your moment we're talking about today? Um, well, passion for today, I'm just enjoying the honesty of guys talking away and being real, coming to a day like today and trying to think about what it is for them to be a bloke. You and Peter got together and wrote that fabulous book. Yeah. Okay. And tell the boys about the book, and uh, are you ready to reprint it? Yeah, we are. We're in the process of reprinting it. Uh, about a year, year ago it came out. Peter and I just thought about the questions of what is it to be an authentic man in our culture today. So we wrote the book uh, for the average man on the street. Didn't want to try to put it together as a Bible study or Christian book. There's lots of them out there. We, we just wanted to write a book that was straight from the hip in plain speak uh, for men about what it is to be a man. And I reckon you two blokes did a fantastic job. It's Cheers, good to have such you. a good Aussie book. What uh, you're going to talk about your son-in-law. You got permission to have a little word about uh, how you talk, get on with your son-in-law. Let's rip into that. Yeah, well, you asked me uh, when to come here today and we were talking about different things we could talk about and I thought I'd talk from the angle as a father of two girls and a boy. And by the way, when you, uh, when you finish, Phil Smith's going to talk about getting on with his daughters. So we'll finish off the, the, the talking part with Phil with the daughters. So yeah, if you rip in and that. talk about the son-in-laws and that yeah. sort of part, that might help a few of us. Yeah, well, I... I've thought a long time about the fact, you know, um, when my daughter started to date this guy, I knew pretty well, pretty well straight away that they were a good match and whether they had realised that yet was another issue. But I thought to myself, you know, this was inevitably going to happen and sure enough, uh, not long into the dating process, he comes to me one day and just says, oh, you know, um, can I have a talk to you? And I'm like, sure. And uh, my son-in-law, future son-in-law, he's not married yet, um, says... Oh, you know, I didn't want to date a girl unless we actually thought it would go all the way, we'd get married. And, uh, you know, Taylor and I are thinking about this, and so I just wanted to flag it with you, and, and I'd like to get your permission if I can marry your daughter. And I just said to him, listen, uh, you may get my permission, but before you actually ask her the question, you need to come back and see me. So this was only early when they were dating. So a couple of months pass, and he calls me up one day and says, oh, Michael, I want to I talk to your daughter about that question. So uh, you said I had to talk to you first. And I said, yeah, you do. So I said, let's go out for dinner on Friday night. We're going to have a chat. I said, bring your Bible, bring yourself, and let's meet. So we sit down across the dinner table, and I basically had this thought framework. You know, you talk about when floods come. And the last guy made the point, no one's going to care about the cars or the bikes or the gear you care about your kids or your, your wife or, or you know, your family. And I thought about you know, the floods in Queensland and all the people who got interviewed. And when the floods came through, the, the number one thing people care about is their family. Uh, the second thing people seemed to care about was could they get family photos out of the house because photos represent memory of family. Uh, you know, and there's a real order there. And I said to my son, future son-in-law to be, and I just made the comment, I said, Pete, you're, you're about to ask me this question. I said, if you think I'm just going to answer yes or no, you, you've got another thing coming. Because you're asking me for the second most important possession in my life. Do you think I'm just going to give that away? So I said, get your Bible and open it up. We're going to have a conversation. And I went out that day and I bought him a leather-bound blank notebook and a really expensive fountain pen. Because I know... He's not, he's not a blokey, blokey type of guy. He's studying accounting. Not, nothing wrong with if you're an accountant out there. Uh, but he's a, he's a pen pusher. So I bought him a really expensive fountain pen. Matter of fact, I didn't know, but it's the first fountain pen he'd ever had in his life. And it was obvious because when he was writing with it, he had no idea how to use the thing. So I was loving that. And I give him these two gifts. And I said, Peter, I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want you to write the question in the book. Some of the questions you can answer to me right here and now. Some of the questions you'll have to turn and talk to your parents about. Some of the questions you're going to have to go talk to Taylor about. Some of the questions you'll need to just ponder. And I said, over the this is the starting point of you thinking through some of these things. And what I want you to do is I want to ask the questions. I want you to start thinking about them. 
And so for the next four hours, we went through scripture, we went through life, we went through a whole bunch of things, and I got him to write it down. So the number one thing, by the way, he's got loving Christian parents. But the number one thing, I said, open up Genesis chapter 1 that started at the beginning. Adam is not alone. God says it's not good that you're alone. God, of course, brings along Eve. God brings Eve to Adam. And then literally is that great initiation of marriage where God says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and the two shall be joined as one. And I said to Peter, underline that word. And he went, the bit where we become one. I said, no, the bit where it says leave. And then I looked him in the eye and I just said, Peter, I have one question for you. What does it mean for you to leave your mum and dad? Because if you're going to marry my daughter, you're planning to leave your mum and dad. I just want to say to all of us today, gentlemen, if you haven't left your mum and dad, it's time. You could have been married 30 years and you're still connected to mum and dad in the sense of needing to leave. And for those of us who are grey or aerodynamic, the reality is, you know, we have got children or grandchildren coming along and I think it's time for us to speak in on. So we went through this for about four hours and at the very end of the conversation, I then just said, looked him in the eye and I said, Peter, let me just cut to the chase now. I said, I am the alpha male in my daughter's life. She has never known another alpha male like me. I'm her father. She loves me. I am the alpha male and I'm proud of that fact. You are asking to become the alpha male in her world. I have only two qualifications I'm looking for in my son-in-laws and or daughter-in-laws, and they are this. Number one, you've got to love Jesus as much, if not more than me. And number two, you've got to be willing to love my child as much, if not more than me. And I looked him in the face and I said, Peter, on both accounts, you qualify. And so I said, now, Peter, ask me the question. And he looked at me and he went, can I have your permission to marry your daughter? And I said, Peter, I give you my permission. You can become that alpha male. And then when it was done, I then said to him, now, you need to know, all these questions that we have not thoroughly answered, I am on your trail. And I said, because this is a one-way deal. It's a non-refundable deal. You take my daughter, you take her for life. And death is what will separate you two. And I will hold you to account to that. So it was fun because when I first met him, I took him out one day and said to him, uh, I'm curious what you think of me. And his first answer was he said, well, you're a little intimidating. And I just went, good. <laughs> so, so I like this guy. He's a good man. So yeah, that's what I did. And I want to encourage you guys, if you've got daughters... You think about how you transition from being the alpha male in their world to letting the new alpha male come in, which also means, by the way, men, we need to let our daughters go. And for those of you who've got a wife, you need to make sure that woman lets that boy go because when my son gets married, I will have the same talk, but not to my daughter-in-law. I will have that talk to my son about what it means to become the alpha in that relationship and where that goes. Because think about it, if the flood hit, what did the guy say? I wish I could have told my wife I loved her. I wish I could have grabbed my kids one more time. I don't give a flying flip about the cars or the house or anything else. And you would hand over your child for someone to marry with just a yes, or not even that, and then play the doting Australian father, oh, I'm not really good at speaking, I don't want to talk to them. For me and my house, that's how we serve the Lord. Michael, that's a fantastic message. I think we'll stop it there and we'll Cheers. get... We'll get I, I think it's a fabulous message. You want to get Phil well, up I to think pick we up get on this? Phil up and Phil can do the same with the daughter and I think we've completed and then we'll get Noel up and do the, a little, his little Good talk idea. and we'll sing how great thou art, and then we'll finish her up, and we'll all go out and have a cup of tea. But Sounds like a good one. Fellas, I, I haven't cut him off too much, have I? It's all good. A fantastic all good. message. I don't mind. Another champion man, absolute man. Cheers, man. Cheers, man. It's all good.